Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be reviewing the GNL Placentia series, JB. But let's do this. This is the GNL Placentia series, JB, and it is the new budget line of JBs from GNL that isn't going to go anywhere. This is an interesting base, and for all the wrong reasons. I purchased this base on sale at Musician's Friend for $2.99, thinking that would be an interesting look at GNL's latest JB model at the budget range. Normally, these retail for $4.99. $500. That's Sire V5 territory. Can these compete? We're going to find out today. Spoiler alert, no. Before we go over the specs of this base, let's address the elephant in the room. The name. Did they just name this base Placenta? No. Placentia. After the city in California, which is right next to, I guess, Fullerton or wherever Giadel is. I actually went there and uh, got the explanation about this particular model line. I am not super impressed with this thus far, and let's go over why. Starting with the body. This is a poplar body with a vintage white finish and a Placentia Tort pick guard here. Speaking of the pick guard, the protective film on top of the pick guard was actually tucked into the neck pocket, so you can see some beautiful flapping plastic chunks underneath there that I couldn't get unsecured without removing the neck. And I am not going to do that on this base. We have a neck pocket that was routed out after the fact, after the paint. So there is a lot of, I guess, like chipping and unevenness around the neck pocket. And there's a lot of visible wood on the treble side of the neck and neck pocket. Not a good look for a nearly $500 instrument. The electronics are GNL in-house single coil pickups. And for hardware, we have a cheap fender style bridge. This is not the GNL locking high mass bridge that we usually see in the Tribute series. The Placentia series is meant to be a tier lower. One problem with that, however, is the fact that they make the Tribute JB and JB2. Both are priced around this price point or even less with the JB2. So who is this base for? Moving on to the neck, this is a 21 fret, uh, 34 inch scale, inch and a half nut, C-shape jazz bass neck, maple on maple. The fretwork is actually not bad in regards to pokiness on the sides, however, the fretwork is not that great either. I could get the action reasonably low, but there are there's buzzing all over the place. The neck finish is also something that really needs to be brought up because at the $500 price point, you have bases like the Sire V5, which offer a roasted maple neck. You have the Squire Classic Vibes and Paranormal that have the thick gloss. You also have other Squires. Uh, I believe it's the, um, what's the active model? But they have roasted maple necks around the same price point. And this neck feels more akin to that of like a Squire bullet base. Maybe a tier above that in regards to finish. It's a very thin, cheap feeling poly. And overall, the neck just feels meh. Moving up to the headstock, we have the typical Giandel headstock, and it says Giandel Placentia Series JB. The tuners are weird tuners. I've never seen these ever used before. They're an interesting setup. However, they are rather low quality and pretty wiggly and loose in their housing. I see how they're assembled, and it's definitely to cut some corners here, in my opinion. So, not the greatest tuners. They also required a lot of turning in order to, you know, get things to where they needed to be. So I think the ratios are a bit off, in my opinion. One other thing to note about this body here is the atrocious pickup route. The bridge pickup route starts off okay, but then halfway through it just... I don't know if they lost the template or something and tried to eyeball it, but it is atrocious. This is some of the worst pickup routing I've ever seen. Here's a picture up close, and there's all sorts of like fuzzy stuff. I don't know if that's like spider webs or cat hair or whatever, but this is not a good pickup route and not a good look for a $500 instrument. Now let's go ahead and turn the space around. Around back, there's not a lot to see here. We have the off-white, the vintage white finish, and the four screw fender style neck attachment here. The back of the neck we can see is barely finished and it's pretty pale maple. However, it is relatively smooth overall. There's no rough spots. 
Um, and then up at the headstock, we see these weird tuners and a big Made in China sticker. That's right, the Placentia series is made in China versus Indonesia, where the Tribute series is made, or USA for the GNDL Fullerton series and custom shop. Now, how much does the GNDL Placentia series JB weigh? This particular example comes in a hair under nine and a half pounds. And how much does the GNDL Placentia series cost? These are retailing for $500. $500, I've mentioned that before, but I just need to reiterate that because like, I love GNDL, I love GNDL. I have my, my L2500 Big Chungus right here. Awesome bass, I love this bass. One of my favorite instruments. I love my L1000, I've played a lot of other great GNDLs. Sadly, this is not one of them. Now let's go ahead and play this bass. You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Okay, first and foremost, I have to say that even while holding the strings, the space is still a little bit noisy. But then when I let go, you do get a, a decent amount of buzz there. Another thing to note is that I'm actually unable to lower the bridge pickup because of the sloppy pickup route. So the treble side of the pickup might be a little too close to the strings. We might have some problems there, but sadly I cannot adjust this. So the pickup heights are the pickup heights and the QC on this is bad. This should have never left the shop. Let's go ahead and play it now because it does not sound all that bad. Here's what this sounds like again with both pickups at full and the tone at 100%. but in my opinion, I think the tone is lacking a bit of that jazz bass sizzle, just a little bit of it. We're still getting it overall, but like something is lacking in the tone in my opinion. So here's both pickups one more time, tone open. Now let's solo these pickups, starting with the neck pickup. Tone at 100%. There is gonna be some single coil hum as these are single coil pickups and we are in a noisy electrical environment. And here's the tone at 50%. Okay, let's turn the tone back up and we are gonna solo the bridge pickup now. Again, apologies in advance. The pickup is very uneven right now and I cannot adjust the height due to the poor pickup route. So the treble side is right against the string. We might get some popping, just fair warning. <laughs> Here's the tone at 50%. 
50%. And here's the tone all the way down. Okay, let's take the tone back up and bring the neck pickup back into the mix. Here's both pickups together with the tone open. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the tone at 50%. Here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> Here's the tone all the way up. I'm going to grab my pick. Both pickups at full. <laughs> And let's solo the neck pickup as well with the pick. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. Let's go ahead and slap with the neck pickup solo. And let's bring the bridge pickup back in and slap it one more time. <laughs> Finally, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on the GNL Placentia series JB. What are you doing, GNL? What are you doing?
Who is this for? Who is going to buy this base? There's so many corners cut, it's practically a circle. It's mind-boggling to think that a company like GNL would release a product like this. Again, the neck pocket was routed out after the body was painted, so it's just real rough around the edge there. It's not like, you know, any other base at the price point. Nothing lines up perfectly, the routing for the pickups is horrible, the neck just feels cheap. Everything about this base is not good. The tuners are wobbly, just the experience of this base is like, who is this for? Someone who hates playing music? Like, why? Why did you make this base? It has no redeeming qualities. The nicest thing I can say about this base is that the pickups sound okay. But for the price, you could get like a Squire, a Sire, you could get a whole load of different jazz basses out there, and there's no shortage of them. Everyone makes a jazz bass, and none of them are as awful as this one, except for maybe Glary or Hard Luck Kings. This is maybe above a Glary or a Hard Luck Kings, but come on, GNL, come on. You can do better than this. So what am I going to rate the GNL Placentia Series JB? Yeah! I'm gonna rate this bass one claw out of five. This is the worst instrument to ever have the GNL name on it. I am sorely disappointed by how atrocious this instrument is in quality control and just overall execution. And this is painful because I love GNL as a company. I like their philosophy. I like the instruments that they make. And they're cool people. Like, we hung out before NAMM and everything. So I really enjoy them as a company. I enjoy their instruments. But, like, what is this? What is this? Let me know your thoughts on the GNL Placenta series down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the GNL placenta. And as always, until we groove again.